Yep. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, hands up everybody who can see me, please. Excellent, all the way. And hands up everybody who can hear me, please. God help you all. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm acutely aware I'm standing between you and beer, so I'll try and keep this to a reasonable pace. It is often said that there are two kinds of people in the world. Um, those who are excellent timekeepers and time managers. Hands up anybody here who thinks they fit into that category. Get out. <laughs> Hands up anybody who thinks they fit into the second category, which is the time some occasionally gets away from them. Few more hands. And for some reason, slides are not moving along as they should. Okay. Um, this is how it feels for a lot of us. And I'm here to talk about some strategies which may help you with this. Um, it's intended for a technical audience because we're not afraid of technology. We're not um, afraid of letting technology help us in what we need to do. And it's also because a lot of us are interrupt driven. This quote resonates with me a lot. Because unfortunately for most people, your brain, your brain is telling you, I got this. I'm good. You can trust me to remember this for you. And I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but your brain lies to you. Your brain tells you it will remember everything. Sadly, for many of us, this is not the case. What you want to do is you want to free up your brain for working on things, not for remembering things. And to do this, you've got to have a system. And as anybody who's, uh, say, read Getting Things Done or any of its variants, um, it's important, a yeah, few hands, um, it's important to have a trusted system. And you have to trust your system because you're essentially going to outsource your remembering function to your trusted system. And there's a rule about using the trusted system, which, which we like to implement in god-awful dog Latin. Non scriptum, non est. If it's not written down, it doesn't exist. And in this case, it means use your trusted system. Put the information into your trusted system. Trust the system. Now, some people are good with um, analog. Some people are good with digital. For a lot of people, me included, there is a certain amount of stickiness of things that's to be observed when you go analog. So if you're analog, go analog. But I understand that this is 2019 and that for some of you, you like to use digital technology. And that's okay too. It's really, it's really all about whatever works for you. And one of the things you can do, because these marvelous devices that we have access to, have calendar functions, they have to-do lists, and I'll talk a little bit later on about some of these. But essentially, you also have to think about your gathering points. What are your gathering points? Your gathering points are the places that work accumulates. For some of us, work comes from email. For some of us, work comes from ticketing systems. For some of us, work comes from someone stopping you in the corridor and going, can you do this, this, this kind of, just this one more thing, one little thing for me? It's like some kind of demented Steve Jobs. One more thing. And if that's the case, then perhaps you have to have a, a way of coping with this and say, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I'll absolutely get that. Um, but would you mind sending me an email because I'm away from my desk? So send me an email um, and the email should be, um, you know, recharge the dilithium capacitor and cross-reference the uh, flux capacitor. And what you're doing is you're, you're taking a little bit of thought away from the person. You're giving them the words to use because you then know if that's what they send you, it will, a little light bulb will go on over your head and say, ah, yes, I need to do that thing. And if the person doesn't send you the email, then perhaps it wasn't that important after all. Now, a lot of people like to use to-do list software. And there are things like, remember the milk or Todoist. Trello is a system which a lot of people use. Um, and Trello's got more of a project focus to it. And you can do shared boards and things like that might be more appropriate. 
for an enterprise slash ISP environment. But I use a slightly different piece of software. I use something called Workflowy. Um, why? Because with a lot of the to-do list software, you do a thing, you mark the thing as complete, and poof, it's gone. Hell no. Because when I mark something as complete, it stays on the damn list. And this means that I can see of all of the components of a job, which ones have I done and which ones are yet remaining to be done. This is roughly what um, a simple thing might look like. You can pop notes on things. No kittens. And you can use this for your work life. You can even use it for your home life. Some people like Tom Limoncelli in his book, Time Management for System Administrators, say you should use the same trusted system. Trust the system. Subliminal messaging at its best. Um, you should use the same system for your work life, your home life, whatever other kind of life you have, really. And what I do is I separate out two things. I use something like to do. Uh, I use something uh, like Workflowy to track my long-term projects, but there's also a smaller scale that you need, which is to do with your what should I be working on today. And for that, I use um, a productivity planner from the nice people at productivityplanner.com. Original naming and easy to remember. And one of the things I like about this is up at the top, it says, most important task of the day. If this was the only thing you did today, you'd be satisfied. It's like they can look into my soul and go, you'll be doing well to get one thing that was on your list at the start of the day done by the end of the day. And then the secondary tasks, completion of these days will make the, the day even better. Who doesn't want to have a day that's even better than you thought it was going to be? And the other thing it does is it asks you to track, say, how long you think an item will take to do. And then at the end of the day, you can have a look at this page and have a good laugh and work out how much time you actually got to spend on the thing in question. You'll also notice it says it's tracking these as 25 minute bubbles. I'll come back to that at the end of it. But one thing you've got to have is you've got to have a plan. And as a great sage of our time once said, I love it when a plan comes together. And in particular, the plan I have is first thing in the morning, I know this is going to sound blasphemous to many of you, before you've had your coffee which is probably your third coffee knowing some of you. But before you have your coffee, sit down and work out what are you gonna to do today? What some people like to do is they like to take their calendar, the shared calendar across the company and block out sections of it and say, I'm gonna be doing this job here, I'm gonna be doing this job here. And then people say, but what happens if I get interrupted and I lose two hours of work? And it's like, that's fine. But take the thing, that it, take the thing you were going to do and move it and then, Note in your calendar the thing that interrupted you so you can keep track of it. And there are a couple of managers in the room, and usually they assign you priority one, priority two, priority three, and priority four. And, and we all work in the priority one stuff because that's really, really important, right? And priority four, yeah, yeah, you'll get to it whenever. Do you see this little guy? This, this is a priority four task. <laughs> All he wants is your love. Because priority four tasks don't get a lot of love. And in particular, people say, I'll work on the priority ones, and then I'll do the priority twos, and then I'll do the priority threes, and then you're dead. So you have to make time for your priority fours. Just, just look at the little guy. If there are any managers in the room, I'm assuming that you assign different priorities of task and that you don't expect the people who work for you to just do the high priority ones. And, you know, you've got to make a little time in your life for the cute little fluffy P4s. And again, if you're in the habit of scheduling in your calendar, you can schedule some of your P4s so that, God damn it, sometimes you just get to scratch the kitten behind the ears. 
However, if you're in a very interrupt-driven environment, getting time for projects can be kind of tricky. And what you need there is you need a shield. And perhaps you can set up what Tom Limoncelli calls an interruption shield, where if you're working with a colleague, maybe she can feel the calls in the morning while you work on project time, and then you flip it around in the afternoon. Um, in some teams, there's, say, uh, an in-hours rota that everybody takes a day at a time or a week at a time, and then you can, they'll take, they'll be the point contact person. Tom Limoncelli talks about this a little bit more in terms of layout. And if people come to approach you, do they hit the tier one engineers first? And only then behind them are the tier two and behind them are the tier three. I love that he thinks we all have the room for this, but hey. Um, if you're interrupted, as I said, write it down. And sometimes for some people, they have to track their time in much greater granularity. And uh, a system like Toggle, T-O-G-G-L, can be useful for this. But when you do get to work on a project, focus is your key. Anybody know what that's called in Italian? Pomodoro. And the Pomodoro system says you set a kitchen timer, but not a real kitchen timer, because then your cubicle mates will kill you. You set a timer for 25 minutes, and that's what you go with. There's software available to do this, like Tamiti on a Mac or equivalents. Get one of those. And the idea is you do 25 minutes working on a particular task, and then when you finish, you mark it on your list. And that's why the 25-minute blocks are in the productivity planner. Um, other people will interrupt you. This is here to make sure you don't interrupt yourself. You're all looking quite thirsty, so I'll stop it there. But a couple of things. Um, recommendations. Julia Evans has a couple of um, wonderful zines, including the legendary Oh Shit Git, and also a very good one called Help, I Have a Manager, um, which has, in particular, has a page about what to discuss with your manager in one-to-ones, which I totally recommend to everybody. Um, Time Management for System Administrators is Tom Limoncelli's book. A little old in the tooth now, but still has worthwhile ideas. And everybody should just go and watch Tanya Riley's talks, particularly the one on cookies versus landmines. I'm in favor of cookies. And um, fire escapes, which is surprisingly interesting. Um, that's where the productivity planner I use from. And the last thing I'll do, if I have a minute left, is I will say, um, a lot of us talk about the hard skills, all about hard skills. Yeah, I can do things with clouds. I can make clouds cry. I can make Kubernetes cry. I can, there seems to be a lot of repressed anger in your life. Um, but one of the things that get a bad name, and part of it is because of the name, is the soft skills. And as I get older, and dear God, I am getting older, it's becoming more obvious to me that while the hard skills are important to help us do our job, what helps us do our job well as a team is the soft skills. And that sometimes it's, um, you'd like to be able to work on your soft skills as well as your hard tech skills. So I'm putting together just a little site. So if anybody can come and catch me afterwards, recommendations of talks or presentations that have helped them. That's live at the moment, just has a few things on it. So um, have a look at that. And thank you very much for listening to me. About a minute left for questions. So if anybody does have questions. And lo, there was Thanks silence. You. Any questions? I see one up there. Oh, Can you give us your name before you give the question? Nah, that's Paul. We all know Paul. <laughs> no, no, we don't. <laughs> Paul McCauley from Workday, everybody. Give him a round of applause. There's Donald. Uh, with, with the Pomodoro in particular, sorry, can you hear me? Just about. Yeah, with the Pomodoro in particular, would it, is it fair to say that one technique that works well is to say, I'm working on this, but I will call, uh, call you back, contact you back in 23 minutes once the timer expires? <laughs> yeah, you can say that. I mean, a phrase that people have used with me is, um, I'll approach someone and they'll say, actually, I'm in the middle of something. Can I talk to you later? And even that's enough for some people. Some people appreciate the, I will talk to you in X minutes because my little timer in the corner of my screen is telling me, and some people just don't take being told to go, to go away and come back later well. That, one, that one's a subject of a future talk, sure. Anybody else? Anybody, Anybody else? else? Think we're done? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Donald. <laughs>